Office Guru. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Skype for Business, the new instant messaging voice and video tool. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, fire up Skype for Business and sign in. So I'm going to sign in with my corporate email address. You should only have to do this once and then it will remember afterwards. So now I'm signed into Skype for business. So the first thing I'm going to do is send an instant message. So I'm going to search for my colleague Pavel, double click on him, and now I can start an instant message conversation. So I'm going to ask Pavel for the July reports and see what he comes back with. So Pavel has some issue with sending that to me, unfortunately. He's saying here the problem is loyalty. Um, I think there's some business going on here between Pavel, Alex and uh, Katie Jordan who also works at Contoso. So one of the nice things about um, Skype for Business is you can send links to useful content. Like Pavel has done. So if you think a piece of content will add value, you can uh, send a link to that. So you can also broaden the conversation to include more participants. So in this case, Alex is going to add Katie to see if she can shed some light on the situation. So now Katie's part of the uh, conversation, so she can add some value. So she's added some value there and subsequently left the conversation. So. From here, we can actually escalate to a voice conversation as so. So yeah. now Alex and Pavel are going to continue the conversation using voice to see if they can resolve uh, the issue they're having. And they can also escalate to a video if they like so they can see each other and read their facial expressions and body language. So for the sake of this demo, I'll be playing all the characters uh, in this scenario. So here I am as Alex. And I will shortly appear as Pavel. So you can start your video conversation. Now, as before, you can um, escalate the conversation and add additional participants. So Alex is once again going to add uh, Katie. Perhaps a little unwise, but there we go. So he's adding Katie. And Katie will now join the conversation. Katie's actually connecting through the app on her phone. So you'll see that shortly. So there you go. So just showing you the image on the, the phone. So these three can have their conversation now uh, with a video conference and hopefully resolve the issues that have been, been going on. And uh, maybe Alex will get his report. So when they're done with that conversation, they can hang up. So a nice thing you can also do with Skype for Business is use um, emoticons. So you see uh, Alex is typing a message and he clicks on the smiley and he uses the smiley face emoticon, sends that on. Now. These emoticons are actually also represented with codes. If you hover over them, it shows you the code. So a B in brackets is actually code for a beer, as Alex has written there. Once you learn a few of these codes, you can actually produce some nice sort of pictures, if you like. So Alex is going to show you one of those now. So he's off home, so he's going to type ST in brackets, which stands for storm and thunder. So a few of those, and then a hashtag in brackets, which shows the sun. Then underneath that, he's going to write GTR in brackets, got to run, AU in brackets, which stands for automobile, AP in brackets, which stands for aeroplane, and then IP in brackets, which stands for island paradise. So there's an image of Alex running to his car, going to the airport and going on holiday. After that recent conversation, I have to agree with him as a, as a good plan of action. So those are some of the basics of using Skype for business. So the next thing we're going to do is share screens. So Alex is now going to contact Pavel and tell him he has a presentation he'd like to show to him. So to show that, he can click on the presentation icon there, or content sharing icon, and choose to share a specific program. So he's going to share a PowerPoint. And just this warns you that other people are about to see content that you're going to present. 
And now Pavel is able to see the presentation you can see in the background. And Alex can start presenting it. So he's showing him the new marketing plan. Now at any point during the presentation, Alex can choose to give control to Pavel so Pavel can advance the slides if he wishes to. This is useful if you've uh, several people on a call and they each have their own slides they want to talk through. It avoids that sort of next, next uh, remark. So here, Alex is giving control to Pavel. There's a warning message again, clicks OK, and now Pavel can advance the slides. So when Alex is finished presenting, he can click to stop presenting and now the content is no longer being displayed. So colleagues can also present content to you. So here Pavel's presenting his new sales strategy to Alex. And Alex can choose to view this in full screen if he wishes to get the full view of the presentation. So the next thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to set up meetings. And the simplest way is, as before, start an instant messaging conversation and invite people. There are other ways, like here. So if I click on the sprocket and click now, that will set up a, conf a conference immediately. And you'll note there are no participants at the moment. So we need to click on this uh, add contacts to add people to the conversation. So in this example, I'm going to add Pavel and I'm going to add Katie also. So they'll receive a notification that they're being invited to a conference uh, on their desktop. And you'll see now they'll start typing, inquiring uh, what the conference is about and so on, because it's a uh, meet now, it's not in the calendar already. So the second way is through Outlook. So you'll note we've got that button there, new Skype meeting. If we click that in the calendar view, then we can create a new meeting using Skype for Business that will be in the calendar. There we go. And that link within the meeting details is the link which will initiate the call. So if I double click on that and click on that link, it will start the uh, conference for us from there. And once again, we have the audio options and we're all set. So if we have an existing meeting, so I'll create one now, new appointment, and I'll invite some attendees. So you'll note this currently isn't a Skype meeting. So if I fill this in or at a later point in time want to make it into a Skype meeting, I can click the Skype meeting button there at the top and that will add their Skype meeting details. And I can send that off to all the attendees. So next thing I'm going to show you is I'll show you around the home screen. So under the user's name there, we've got status. So these are some of the available statuses, um, available, busy, and, and so on. Now that will typically follow your outlook. So if we go under tools and options and personal, we see we've got the option there to make it follow your outlook. So if your outlook calendar is showing busy, uh, Skype for Business will also show busy. Also under the status here, we've got some options which show what we can choose um, when we're shown as away and so on. So those may be worth changing if you like. Up at the top here, we have our Skype for business notes. So we can just write our thought for the day or, or what we're currently up to. And when people have added us as a contact, they'll see that in their list. So underneath here, we have set your location. So what this does is it uses the signature of the Wi-Fi network you're connected to to show where you are. So if you type working from home, the next time you're working from home and you connect to that network, it will show that uh, as your location. Same with the office and so on. If you click on that drop down, you can also choose to have it not display your location. So underneath here we have uh, contacts. So this is where you can add people in your organization or beyond to, uh, to your contacts list. So there I've searched for Katie. If I right click on Katie, I can add her to my contacts. Underneath here we have uh, groups, so we can group them together if that suits. So if I click on this icon on the right, I can click create a group. And then I can create a group for a list of my colleagues for perhaps a specific project or location. So here I'm going to create a group called London. And then I can add London-based colleagues to that. So I could add uh, Katie, right click on her, add to contact list and select London. And do the same for Pavel and also for Tony.
So now once I've got these contacts in a group, I can right click the group heading and do an action on the whole group, such as send an instant message, send an email, initiate a conference or schedule a meeting. So that's a really useful function of the uh, groups. With any contact in your list, you can choose to set a privacy relationship for them. And this affects the way they can interact with you over uh, Skype for Business and what pieces of information they see. So we've got the prominent ones really are work group, colleagues and blocked. So people in your work group will be able to instant message you even if you set your status to do not disturb. Colleagues will be able to instant message you normally uh, but not if your status is set to do not disturb and blocked contacts will not be able to instant message you at all. So if I choose to block Katie here and click OK now Casey will no longer be able to contact me through Skype for Business. This is particularly useful if you're federated with external organizations that you're no longer doing business with. You may wish to not have them contact you via Skype for Business. So to restore Katie, I can right click on her and change privacy relationship and either choose one or go back to auto assign, which will choose the default in this case, which is colleagues. So I can click OK and now we can use Skype for Business between us as normal. So considering the remaining parts of the home screen, under contacts if I click on status, that will group the contacts I've saved by their current online status. If I click on relationships, that will group them by the privacy relationship I've selected for them. And if I click on new, that will show me people who've recently added me to their contacts list. Moving to the top, if I click on conversations, this shows me the missed conversations, the calls I've had and if I click on all that will show me all of the conversations. Double clicking on a conversation will open it in a new window where I can continue the conversation if I wish. And finally at the end if I click on meetings this shows the current meetings I have in today's schedule. The ones that are Skype meetings are shown in blue and if I double click on those that will initiate the Skype meeting. Like so. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to tag for status change alerts. Now this function is commonly known as stalker mode and is a great way to catch people out. So if I was to right click on Katie and click tag for status change alerts, that means the instant her status changes, for example from busy to available or away to available, I'll get an alert on my desktop like the one I'm about to receive now. So there we are, Katie's status has changed from away to available. So if I click on Katie now, I can start to instant message her. So you imagine she's probably just come out of a meeting and got back to her desk, not quite got her head in the right space. So I can immediately ask, will the report be done by the close of business? And without proper time to think, she'll reply, yes, definitely. And then on reflection, maybe not. So I'm going to say thanks, you're the best, and quickly end the conversation. Sneaky, hey? So now we're going to look at how to remove people from groups. So once we have our group set up, if we want to remove someone from it, we right click that person and click remove from group and then click yes. We can also right click on the group and delete the group if we like. This just removes the colleagues from that list. You can still find them by searching. So they're not deleted in any sense, just removed from that group. So next I'm going to show you how to send messages to groups from Active Directory. So say for example that group there, the executives, we wanted to send them an instant message or so on. We can type the name of the group into the search box in Skype for Business and then they appear there from Active Directory. So from there we can initiate any of these options such as an instant message, conference call or so on. So here I'm starting an instant message conversation with all members of that group and I can start to interact with them from there.
So next we'll look at the archive of a conversation history. So you can find this in your Outlook in the folder called Conversation History. So here you can see all the conversations I've been having today with Pavel and with Katie. This uh, is searchable, so if we go up to the search bar at the top, we can search for a specific phrase in a conversation, such as report, and that pulls up the conversation I was having with Katie. So if I double click on that, that will open the conversation. And from here, if I hover over Katie's name, that will open the communication options. And if I click on the instant message symbol, that will open up a instant message conversation with the context of the previous conversation. So continuing with the Outlook touch points with Skype for Business and Outlook, if you open an email message, you'll see all the contacts in that email message are along the top. If I hover over one of those, that opens the communication options with that user. And if I click on instant message, that will start a new instant message with that user and the subject of the instant message is the same as the subject line of the email. So that will provide them with a bit of context when it pops up on their desktop or device. So next we will consider the touch points in SharePoint. So this is an example SharePoint site and I've navigated to a document library. You see on the administration guide, that's the last editor, and if I hover over them and click on the instant message, that will start a new instant message with them about that particular document. There are also some touch points with Skype for Business and Office applications such as Microsoft Word. So if I choose to edit this document here, the administrator guide, you'll notice on the bottom left that there is more than one author in the document. I'm currently co-authoring this with Pavel. So if I hover over him and click instant message, I can start to instant message with him from here. So I'm going to inquire as to why he's editing a document that's already been approved. So Pavel comes back advising that maybe he should have checked Yammer to be fully up to speed. So interestingly, Pavel is asking if he can take Katie out. I think Katie has dumped Alex after he asked for that report by close of play and Alex responds accordingly. So that's an overview of how to use Skype for business. Remember to like, share and subscribe.